Hello everyone, I'm Skyzy. Welcome to the third episode in my series about encoded storage tech. In the first two videos, I showcased an encoded bulk and an encoded chest hall, respectively. And I got a lot of questions asking how to make them sort items. Well, today we will be looking at item to binary encoders, the contraptions that are required to make binary encoded storages sort stuff. Now, I have two encoders prepared for today. I have a smaller 7-bit encoder, and I have a 10-bit encoder. The 7-bit encoder can sort up to 128 item types, and the 10-bit encoder can sort 1024 item types. If we look at the individual slices of these encoders, you will see that it's actually quite simple how it works. Simply, this chest is pre-filled to a specified amount, so that when one item is removed, the hopper above the chest will unlock, and a signal will be sent down here to the corresponding bit. So, if you watch the observer, and I take an item out, that will pulse and sends a signal through to the last bit. So this is the slice for the 7-bit encoder. It also has the extra feature of being able to have a status output for when the chest is not reset. You can use this redstone line here as a signal to tell your encoder to not encode any new items. Now both of these encoders use a method known as bit grouping to minimize the amount of chests required for the encoder. Now normally for a 7-bit encoder, you would need 14 chests to sort 128 item types. However, we have cut that down to 11 chests by using bit grouping to group certain areas together. So in the case of the 7-bit encoder, we have grouped the first two bits, the second two bits, the third two bits and the last bit together. And you can see that on these signs that I've laid out here. Both of these encoders also have some safety features, which can be seen through this checklist at the back. The first check is here, which detects if the minecart is in the correct location. The second check is to see if the chests are reset correctly. And the third check is to see if the encoder actually has items that need to be encoded. Another safety feature these encoders have is loose item protection. These are supposed to only take in shulker boxes, however, if I were to input just a normal loose item, such as mangrove stairs, and then unlock these hoppers, uh, you will see that uh, this does not turn on all the way, meaning that the encoder can't fire, and instead it will be shut down by moving this composter down and replacing it with this one, which is one signal strength higher. This prevents the encoder from firing. Unfortunately, this does not protect against the edge case of putting an unstackable item in that isn't a shulker box, or the edge case of a shulker box and then a loose item being inputted. So if you were to input a shulker box and then a piece of TNT, there would be a 50% chance for some of the encoder to blow up. Both of these encoders transfer their codes through serial binary rather than parallel binary, meaning that uh, the code is transferred through one rail line in total, as opposed to one rail line per bit. Now, we can see this serial transmission in action if we input an item that's in the encoder. So you can see this encoder is already set up with an item layout from my latest storage system. So if I were to input redstone comparators, you will see that they get encoded, and the output goes through this rail line down here. So if we do that again, the code gets activated, transmitted, and our box ends up over here. This 10-bit encoder may look a lot more complicated than the 7-bit encoder here, however, it's essentially the same thing. It's just that this time there are two layers of this slice stacked on top of each other. This allows for less processing time as your encoder does not have to be as long. This 10-bit encoder is optimized for chest hole processing, so it outputs a 9-bit code as well as one extra bit. Now, we use those 9 bits as 6 bits to unlock a slice in a chest hall, 1 bit to select which side of the slice, 2 bits to select the water stream, and 1 extra bit to select which hall we are sorting into. If that doesn't make sense to you, you can go watch my video about chest halls. Once again, this 10-bit encoder has all the same safety features as the 7-bit encoder, with a bit of extra protection. Now, this 7-bit encoder is a bit simpler in handling what's known as dry fire protection, which essentially means that 
your encoder activates without any items. This is generally catastrophic as it would scramble all the chests. However, we have a chest here to protect against dry fire, which is just filled with four unstackables. So if I were to uh, fire this minecart manually, there is one empty slot, so it would take out the first unstackable of this chest, and it would not be able to scramble the rest of the chests. That item would then be returned into here, and the dry fire shutdown would be activated. This is also the same shutdown latch that activates when a loose item is inputted. This method of processing is extremely useful, however this 7-bit encoder is uh, decently flawed because it doesn't lock this hopper once dry fire is uh, detected, meaning that one of these four dummy items in the minecart will end up dropped either into this water stream or onto this rail. This 10-bit encoder is a bit more complicated in the way it handles dry fire, now, as you can see, when dry fire is detected and this repeater turns off, this redstone dust will activate, which sends a signal through this chain of repeaters to lock this hopper. So if I were to manually dry fire this encoder, you'll see this cart is set up and this chest is correct. And I were to activate this. So we get our item back in this chest and no damage is done. You can see the cart still has the same amount of dummy items and all that has happened is that the shutdown has activated, which can be reset by simply clicking this block. Now before I go, I would also like to thank Obi and Optic. Their encoders were very inspiring to me and I looked at both of them quite extensively while developing mine. And my 10-bit encoder is fundamentally a rewire of Obi's except with an extra safety feature and with the code output on the bottom instead of the top. As always, I will be leaving a world download and a schematic in the description of this video and in the Discord, as well as in my new personal Discord that you can join now. Thank you everyone for watching and goodbye. Now I know what you're thinking. I've already recorded the outro. The video is over. Why am I still here? Well, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a sneak peek at something that will release hopefully very soon. This is a main storage that I have put together over the past few weeks. It was designed for the needs of the Quasar server. It has two chest halls and an encoded bulk. See the external bulk if we fire over here. Once I have completed testing on this storage, you can expect a new video as well as a public release in the Storage Tech Discord. Thank you everyone for watching, but for real this time, and goodbye. Who's not missing a minecart? I don't know what you're on about. It's fine, this is okay.